Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, long time no see. Uh, I am extremely excited to be back in the Kerbal Universe with Kerbal Space Program. It has been several months uh, since I've done my last video. Uh, lots of things have happened in that time. Uh, originally, my next video was going to be about uh, the new version of MechJeb, the autopilot system. Uh, shortly after that was the great uh, forum debacle of 2013, where the forums and the spaceport, the website for the mods, went down for several weeks. And I couldn't find a copy of uh, MechJab, and uh, it was just kind of a mess. And um, they recovered from that pretty well. And I just, uh, life's been busy, things have been happening, so I never had a chance to come back, really, except for a couple of times to try this out. However, yesterday, um, we have gone through, uh, for my last update, we've gone through um, versions 0.2 and 0.21. Yesterday, version 0.22 uh, was released, and uh, it's almost like a whole different game. Uh, the first thing, uh, the biggest thing of this is the fact that the uh, first iteration of the career mode um, has been launched. And uh, although it's a uh, very early work in progress, it's very cool to see. So um, I have a thousand things to go over in a short amount of time. So I'm going to talk fast and we're just going to jump into this. So uh, without further ado, let's do this. I have uh, completely restarted our worlds. and. Uh, Actually, let me show you this first. Uh, now, when you go to start a new um, game, you have a couple of choices you didn't have before. Of course, you can put your uh, player name in. The uh, One thing that was added a couple of versions ago now is that there's flags. Uh, these are the stock flags. I have gone, um, you can add uh, your own flags, your custom flags, and a lot of mod uh, authors will do that, add their own uh, flags as logos. And I've added one for ourselves. But you'll notice that in addition to Sandbox, um, which has all of our parts and everything unlocked, there's now the new Career Mode. And Career Mode um, is the first step to managing a space program. You have, when you first start out, you only have a few parts unlocked. And you have to complete missions and do experiments to gain uh, research points that unlocks uh, stuff on a tree uh, to get you new point, or um, I'm sorry, new parts and uh, uh, new abilities to construct stuff. So uh, let's get in and check out all the changes. First of all, we are going to go into our test center, which is the sandbox mode, so we can go over everything that's been unlocked. And uh, kaboom! The very first thing you will notice is that our space center has changed immensely. Several large structures have been added, uh, and the structures that were there have been completely overhauled. Uh, another thing you'll notice is that the terrain has gone, been completely worked over. There's new, the water's been changed a couple of times, the beaches have been changed, but the um, the terrain has been completely overhauled. You can tell by the mountains over there that they've redone that. Uh, they've redone this for a lot of Kerbin, um, and they've added uh, procedurally generated craters on the moon and redone some of the textures and the um, uh, the terrain on the moon too. But this is obviously the biggest uh, the biggest change here. Um, we have our uh, our space plane construction area that we've had before, our vertical assembly building that we had before, and we've got a tracking station and a launch pad. While the meshes have been reworked, uh, a lot of it is the, cha is the same except for a few things changed. The biggest uh, additions are right here. This is the astronaut uh, complex. And uh, now we have the ability to hire uh, new astronauts. We have our starting... Uh, three that we usually have, Jebediah, Bill, and Bob. But now we can ho hire um, additional ones. We can assign um, specific uh, Kerbals that we want to missions. And uh, we can remove them from mission uh, if we want. And uh, it allows us to keep track of our lost Kerbals, of which usually there are a great many. But um, so that's the astronaut complex. Um, and the other major addition, that we've got a building here that's the Mission Control Center. It's not really functional. I'm, I'm not sure what they're going to do with it, but uh, it's just kind of there for good looks. But the other major addition is the Research and Development Center right here. And it's closed right now because we're in Sandbox. We'll go over in a minute. Uh, basically, it accesses your uh, tech tree um, and allows you to uh, unlock your parts and stuff in career mode. We've got our, um, our flight strip and our launch setter. So uh, another big change is, is there's now a day and night cycle 
uh, for your space center so uh, that matches uh, your mission. So it will get dark and lights will come on and uh, whatnot. It'll match basically the time uh, when you're in flight mode. Uh, go into the tracking center real quick. There's just been a couple of changes. Pretty familiar stuff. The, the big thing is, is you can no longer, uh, you don't just quit out of missions. You don't just end a mission. Um, you can revert your mission back to uh, the point that you were at the assembly building or the point of launch. If you want to go back, if something disastrous happens, you want to start over. Or if you have landed on Kerbin and survived, you uh, with this button, you can now recover your spacecraft and your Kerbals. Um, effectively ending their mission or you can just uh, you can terminate uh, a mission uh, from the screen um, but you can't do it via menu anymore uh, here's the moon if we zoom in you can see the great amount of craters there that are procedurally generated it's different for every game uh, but that kind of adds a cool little random deal um, you can now filter your parts by debris, probes, rovers, landers, ships, etc. up here if you've got a bunch of stuff in space. And you're looking for a particular item, you can filter that up here and choose it on the side. And uh, we've got an iteration of the uh, knowledge base up here. You click the I, you can get information on whatever you're focused on. So right now it's the moon. Double click Kerbin, you can now check out everything on Kerbin. And you can get the, the uh, parameters, um, which is basically all the stats on it. If you have a vessel targeted, it will give you all the information about your uh, vessel and I believe the people who are on board. So that's a, that's a very cool addition to it. And you can see the, uh, the interior as well as the exterior has gotten a complete overhaul. Um, we've got a lot of action going on. A few new parts. We've got a, a cupola, uh, which there's one on the space station. They do, I believe, their... On the actual space station, you do the robotics work, and uh, they can basically sit up and view the Earth almost in 360 degrees from there. Uh, so we've got that added with an IVA, which means it has an uh, interior uh, model when you go inside. Um, we have an external command seat, which is, uh, which is actually really cool. If you go here, You can attach this command seat uh, to almost anything, if not everything. Um, mainly, this was intended for if you build rovers or the like, you can attach um, you can attach the Kerbals, or the Kerbals can climb up the mountain so they can drive around in it. But uh, there have been some great videos, and I believe we've done a couple, uh, where you can basically attach them to a rocket and shoot them up and, and cause disastrous things to happen. There's been some additions of wheels, uh, clamps, and, and parts and whatnot, um, which are great things. Another big deal is there's been some parts added for the science um, issue, the new functions. We've got the Mystery Goo Containment Unit and the uh, SC9001 Science Junior. Uh, basically, these are put on your rockets or your spacecraft, and you do experiments with them in different. Um, in different situations to get different results and basically it will grant you different uh, levels of science points. In this version now there's things called sub-assemblies. Um, basically I haven't messed around with it a lot but from what I understand you can actually build uh, sub-assemblies with rockets. Um, I believe you know you can build a stage with boosters and whatnot. And if you're going to use them on all of your rockets you can drop them as a sub-assembly and it will actually save it and you can pull it up as a part to um, add to future rockets. So if you've got, um, you know, a certain configuration of, of boosters and engines and whatnot that you're just going to use over and over again, like I have in the past, uh, that's a good thing for you. Uh, we've got our parts assembly. We've got our action groups as before. Now you can actually assign and uh, move around crew from uh, this now that we've got the astronaut complex in, in place. And we've got the mission flag. Uh, addition where you can uh, put flags on your which is why it's called the mission flag but you'll notice that the flag is actually uh, present in here and uh, well, one of the funniest things that I just noticed last night is the each one of these little Kerbal guys are doing different things uh, some of them will knock themselves on the head and fall over and it's it's kind of funny because none of them are actually doing the same thing so it's 
just uh, one of those funny deals. Another major uh, overhaul that's happened in the last couple of um, updates is a complete rewrite of the SAS, which is the Stability Augmentation uh, System. Uh, they have gone through and rewritten it, so it is uh, a lot more stable. Um, the command pods, I believe, have their own built-in system. They're basically based on reaction wheels now, um, which spin around quickly, provide uh, torque, and kind of keep things in line. Uh, but it's been completely rewritten. It, it is uh, it's a lot easier to use. So we'll, we'll check that out later. But uh, basically, it, it works a lot like the SAS, except it's better. And uh, before, you used to have to turn the SAS off if you were going to make adjustments to your trajectory, and now you can actually do that on the fly. You don't have to turn it off. You can just alter your input, and it will save it for you. So I'm going gonna, gonna to hop back out and... Uh, Get into our career mode so we can check that out because that is the uh, the thing I think I'm most excited about. Also, uh, just as a little aside for those of you that are um, into your your planes and, and whatnot, there in the island, and I'm sure most people have seen it, there is an, an airstrip out here on this island, and it has re received some love, and they have uh, uh, updated it and enhanced it a bit. And I haven't flown out there yet, but uh, I think I'm going to pretty soon. So. Uh, with that new SAS rewrite, planes are a lot easier to fly, I have found. So uh, we're definitely going to have to go out there at some point. So let me hop out. I'm going to get into our other world, basically, in career mode and check it out. All right, we are back in our, our new world, uh, which I have started in career mode that we will probably be working with uh, most of the time now. Another change that... Uh, I forgot to add is that biomes uh, biome system is being added right now. It's just Kerbin and the moon. Um, the biomes uh, allow for different situations for experiments. So in one area, say a coastal or mountain region, you could do experiments. If you went to a desert and you'd get some results. If you went to a desert area, uh, you would get uh, you know, different results. And I think adds a little bit of because it's hard to get research points. I think in the beginning. Um, it adds some different uh, situations where you can uh, keep adding them. Um, so let's go into our sub-assembly, or I'm sorry, our assembly building. And you will notice that our options have been severely limited. We now have one command pod. We have an engine, a booster, a fuel tank. We have a, a girder segment. We have a parachute. And we have just our Communotron antenna. Um, the nice things that have been added about antennas is if you have them installed and they are powered, you can transmit the results of your science experiments uh, back to the ground uh, and get points for them. Uh, I have been, I've read that uh, they do take energy and they take a lot of energy, so you have to plan your battery packs accordingly. Um, the landing legs have been, uh, which we don't have yet, have been altered to um, be more shock absorbent when you land. And uh, the nose cones, which we'll have later, uh, have been changed a bit to add to some stability. So uh, some, some cool little things here and there that they're really tweaking and coming up with. So here is our tech tree. We get it by entering our research and development center. Right now, we just have a start, basically, is what it's called. And this is the technology that we've started out with. And uh, as we do experiments and gain science points, we'll be able to unlock um, different areas of the tech tree. The next thing that we have is basic rocketry. We get a couple more fuel tanks, we get our first um, experimental unit, and uh, we get our stack decoupler. So um, very cool stuff. We need to have five uh, research points for it. We have zero right now. So we need to do a mission uh, real quick um, to do that. So there's our, uh, there's our research center. Just click on that and get to your tree. So let's build a real quick rocket. It's probably going to be the most simple rocket we've ever come up with. That's all right. We've got one command pod. We're adding a single booster. And a parachute. Now, I would have liked to have seen, just like when I started out with this series, I would have liked to have seen at least one probe or uh, some sort of unmanned um, attachment as the opening uh, salvo that you could launch um, and do stuff with it. 
seems to me kind of silly to send uh, Kerbals up in your very first uh, mission to test out. Basically, it's it's the dawn of the rocket age, and um, you're basically you're testing out rockets for the first time, and it seems kind of crazy, and, and maybe in fitting with the Kerbals that you would uh, you would fling a Kerbal up very first thing. Um, but that's okay. Uh, they're going to tweak it. Maybe they'll change it. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, check our crew real quick. And Jebediah, our main man, is in the cockpit. And um, yeah, we're ready to go. Uh, one thing that I need to remember to do is add a stage and put our parachute up there. Otherwise, the parachute, I've done this before, the parachute will. Uh, will fling off as soon as you launch. So let's save this. And um, another addition is, is now you can uh, kind of give a brief description of what your rocket does. If you want to add notes or whatever for other people, if you share craft files, or just if you need to remember um, what you were doing. And this is basically what this is. So we're going to save it as usual. We're going to head to the launch pad. All right, we're on the rock uh, launch pad settling in. One thing you'll notice is we, uh, we have our flag with our custom flag up there. Uh, not a lot of changes to the, to the actual launch pad. I'm hoping that that can happen soon. But uh, the view of the space center is um, really looking amazing. Uh, I am definitely I'm saving my earlier versions of the game so I can kind of go back and look. It's it's very cool to go back and look and see how uh, things have changed and progressed. So uh, there, this is a solid rocket booster. There is uh, there's no throttle up or anything, so we're not going to worry about that. I am going to turn the SAS on so that the reaction wheels inside the pod keep us steady, and um, and we're going to do this. So uh, yeah, a little nervous for some reason. But uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Jebediah is looking good. So, uh, in three, two, one, launch. There we go. Jebediah, very pleased with that. Uh, we're cruising fairly quick. There is no throttles. We can't slow down. We probably will be uh, hitting our terminal velocity and uh, racking up a few Gs, maybe some heat on the nose. Five thousand. I am. Uh, I am going to. You can see the, some of the aerodynamic pressure building up there because we're going so fast. I was going to turn, and I got busy talking, but that's okay. Uh, the engine is burned out. We're going to cruise to the apex of our flight and then start falling again. Very simple rocket test. Uh, but you did a, do get a great view of the uh, new terrain meshes um, for the mountains and uh, the whatnot of the Kerbin. There's that spaceport down there, or that uh, airport. Some mountains there that I haven't seen before. Beautiful version of the moon right there. Grab a screenshot of that real quick. And our, um, our speed's building back up, so now we're starting to fall. Jebediah is still looking very pleased with himself, having a good time. And drag is starting to pick up quite a bit. We're losing some of that speed we gained from falling, and we're pretty much falling right back into the uh, space center. I was going to point us towards the ocean because we, since we don't have decouplers, we can't um, we can't detach from this rocket. So it's going to be kind of a rough landing, I'm sure. About 2,500 feet. And get our drogue shoot out there, slow us down a bit more. At 500 feet, it will open completely, and uh, we'll drop down. There we go. A little jolt for Jebediah. It looked like actually it jumped up to about 15 uh, Gs there, so I'm sure it was uh, quite, quite the jolt for the crazy man. Oh, look at those mountains. It, it seems, for me at least, it seems like the little things that are the best. 
Uh, we slowed to about 7.7 .7 meters a second. I think it usually, I want to say usually hit about six. Uh, and I think the added weight of this the rocket's probably dragging us down a bit more. Another great view of the exteriors of this new spaceport. And we're about to hit the ground here. Real quick like. <laughs> about the only time I've seen a look of uh, shock from Jebediah uh, when the booster exploded upon impact. But uh, we are safe. We're on the ground. Jebediah is a little, little weak on the knees right now. But uh, he'll be all right. There he is right there. And one of the coolest features when you do land now on the moon or even Kerbin, you can uh, you can plant your flag. There we go. Very cool looking. You can put a um, you can uh, name the site, uh, place a plaque on it if you want. A uh, very cool addition. You can also issue an EVA report. Uh, we got a scientific value of 2.4 off of that. Some cool stuff. We're going to keep that report. Uh, what the, we might as well take a surface sample while we're at it. And that can be done for all EVAs, like if you're on the moon especially. Um, so here we go. Another 30 mits of data. Scientific value of 9. Very cool. There we go. And uh, that's going to be it for the flight. So let's go ahead and go back out. And we're going to recover because we are we did land safely. So uh, basically we can send our crews out and pick it up. Uh, from the recovery of the vessel, that uh, was a very short flight. We got one unit of data. And uh, we got five science off of it. I'm going to grab that flag. And uh, we're going to pick up Jebediah. So there we go. From Jebediah, we got 30 units of data. So we got nine at, uh, at 0.3 data value. That was nine science. We got 2.4 science off of the uh, capsule itself. So we got 16 science points. So we got 11.4 uh, 11 earned on the mission. So we're good to go. Let's head back out. You can see up here at the top, we've got 16 points. So uh, down here, underneath each of these parts is uh, is a cost. This one is 1,600 credits. To unlock, it shows. And the cost of buying one is 850 credits. We've got an amount in stock of 999. I'm going to assume that uh, as this is developed and there's further iterations, that there's going to be costs associated with the... Um, with the parts, my understanding, if I remember right, was that you will get uh, credits from completing missions. And I believe if they may be putting maybe objectives in. And if you complete those objectives, you'll get more credits. That, and you'll have to um, manage the budgetary concerns of your spaceport as well. So uh, let's research this. Boom. We have uh, opened up three more areas. Uh, this is survivability. It gives us the liquid fuel engine. Uh, landing struts and a new uh, radial parachute. This one is stability, gives you a nose cone, the uh, first uh, winglets, and the radial decoupler. And this one is general rock, uh, gives us another liquid engine, uh, the separatrons that I uh, usually put on stages to separate them faster, and the solid rocket or solid fuel booster, the bigger one that uh, we showed earlier. So, um, I don't know, I'm one of those people that like desperately needs to unlock entire trees, so I'm not sure if I would specialize or not, but um, that's how it is. This one's 20 research points, this one's 18, and this one is 15. So um, definitely as you progress, you will get more points and be able to do more complex things. Uh, I have noticed that if you continue to do the same uh, flights over and over again uh, under the same conditions, um, it does not offer you as many points um in fact at one point i think i had something like 0.5 uh, points when i did the same mission three times over 
Uh, so it definitely wants you to go out and do just experiment and do different things. So I think uh, that's going to be the wrap up point. Uh, I wanted to go over some of the changes in the new system uh, real briefly. Um, the next video, I think, will unlock a couple of more trees and uh, start exploration. Uh, I definitely, kind of the mods right now are in a state of flux because of the new release. They're all going to have to kind of up, um, update, but I definitely uh, believe that I'm going to start doing regular mod spotlights because there are some very cool additions to this game. Uh, I, I know why Squad has hired several of them to help develop because some of these guys are brilliant. So I want to touch on those and, um, and get uh, into that. But So that's the update to Kerbal Space Program, guys. The game is getting amazing. It's gone on sale a couple of times on Steam. Uh, right now, I think it's twenty two ninety five or around that on Steam. Uh, Gets you instant access for the rest of the development period and the life of the game. And uh, that's going to be it, guys. Uh, good to have you back here. Like and subscribe, all that kind of general uh, nonsense. And uh, I believe we are putting the finishing touches on our Twitch uh, channel. So we're going to start live streaming some stuff. Actatus and I... Uh, both have the game, so I believe uh, we're going to live stream a few times and uh, build structures and whatnot back and forth with each other and uh, all that kind of uh, crazy stuff. So uh, like, subscribe, let me know what you want to see, and uh, we'll see you soon, guys. Take care.